welcome to Between the Lines. I am Tracy Hunter Abramson, and I am here with Sean Ann Bessie, Esther Hatch, and Sarah M. Eden. And today we are going to talk about kind of a different, this was prompted by about a month ago. Um, we were all together in Idaho for a book signing. So first of all, thank you for everyone who came out. Um, and we apologize for the lines. <laughs> but um, you guys made us feel like total rock stars. It was amazing. But it also got me thinking what it was, um, what, it, what do we consider really the true measure of success? So going back to the beginning of your writing career, you know, when we were just starting before you were published, what, it, what, what was it that you were striving for? What did you consider that pinnacle moment that would make you consider yourself a success? So I don't know about yours, but for me, like, at the very beginning, just like writing was a lot of work. So each week I had like a goal. And so getting that done was awesome. And I didn't really, I started out without thinking I would get published. Now in the back of my mind, of course, if I'm spending the time on this project, I, I thought, well, maybe someday, maybe it'll be so awesome. I decide to do that, but it wasn't really my goal. Um, but then when I, um, I decided to make it my goal to write and be published, I feel like like that first acceptance letter for the publisher was like, like what I, I'd been waiting on it for months. I had special ringtones set on my phone. So I would know exactly like if that <laughs> was coming in. So um, yeah, there, I think that was maybe the best and most successful I've ever felt was getting the first contract. So yeah. Yeah. That's a huge feeling. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. I think one of the very first like explicitly stated I will feel successful if kind of moments I had, I wanted to make enough from selling books to pay for the supplies I used in writing those books. <laughs> so <laughs> to make enough to pay for the paper that I printed manuscripts on and and the red pens that I used to mark it up and just the supplies that went into it and it took a little while to get there, not because I was spending so much on supplies, <laughs> but because of the realities of this industry. But that was one of my very first benchmarks for success that I set for myself. I love that. You just didn't want to be in the deficit. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm a lot like Esther. I think at the beginning, having my first, my very first book accepted for publication felt like the biggest success ever. And of course, from the time that you receive that acceptance to the time the book is actually published is months. And so I think second to that would be the first time I saw one of my, well, my first book, I guess, on the bookstore shelves that was when I thought, wow, it's real. And it really happened. So yeah. I, I think for me, like when I first got that phone call saying that they were accepting my book, first of all, it was a good thing I was sitting down because I'm not sure if I would have injured myself when I collapsed. But um, like I wasn't, I kept feeling like, oh my gosh, they could pull, pull back at any time. Cause it took a while from the time they said they wanted my book till I actually saw a contract. And even after that, I'm like, well, you know, will it be real? And so I think for me, it was really just holding my book for the first time in my hands because back then, you know, social media was very different, like didn't really exist in a lot of ways back then. And so um, the first time I saw my book, the book cover was actually online on, I think like Amazon or one of the online book sites. So I hadn't even seen my cover until it was already on, you right. know, so it was like starting to become a real, but as soon as I actually had it in my hand, that was, that was my big moment. So with that said, um, how much has your definition of success changed over time? We've all been writing for quite a while now. What's successful to you now? Mm, I think so much has changed. Um, being part of the writing community has been a huge blessing in my life. But it also opens your eyes to what other authors are doing and um, and the awards they're winning, the number of books they're selling, and that awful comparison thing will creep in, you know? And so it's very easy to see success once you're in the industry, um, in sales figures or awards, um, and, and it can be hard to look past them because that is, 
you know, we're dealing with something that's so hard to actually put on paper as far as success, but those are things that you can measure. Um, and so I, I guess I've learned that the target is always moving and that it's a different target for every author. And so sometimes I feel the weight of performing well on those things that can be measured, not just for me, but for my publisher, for my editor, for all those who invest so much in my work, I want to do well for them too. Um, and so I would say that target is always changing. What is success is always changing. Yeah, I feel like in this industry and probably in a lot, you get one goal and then you make another because I think as creatures, we want to be improving. We want to feel like we're doing better one year to the next. So I definitely feel like as you look, as you start making money and having this be a career, uh, that suddenly becomes kind of more benchmark-esque. It's not just about paying for paper. <laughs> <laughs> which is a good thing. But the, I think most of us started out that way where it, was, it cost us money to do this. And then fun, finally it starts not costing us money. And now it's more about like, okay, I made this much last year. Can I beat that this year? And what mm -hmm. do I need to do to do that? Um, so that is always changing. Um, I feel like some of my goals have actually stayed the same or like maybe I've forgotten them and I've had to remind myself about them. Uh, I feel like one thing that I love about this career is that it is actually one that I feel like I can bend the will of my career to my life. And so I try really hard to keep that goal forefront in my mind that if this is causing my family harm or me harm, that I can step back a little and say, like, the goal of this is that I have a job that I love. And so I like to keep that goal always there. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I think with me, I do think that there's a lot of changes as far as like when I started, it's like if I could get a book done in a year, I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And, you know, of course, as time goes on, you become more efficient and you learn more. And so, um, you know, the goals change in that way. But I think from the very beginning, I've always had one constant goal. And I think this is what, if as long as I keep true to this, I can keep myself from kind of falling into some of those comparison games. And that is just, I want every book to be hopefully a little better than the last, but if nothing else, I don't want it to be a disappointment to my readers because I want to make sure that no one ever feels like I didn't put the time in. And obviously there's going to be some that people like more than others, but you know, that's just been consistently my goal. And um, one thing that can be a challenge is most of us share the, the same editor and we've all had the same editor at some point. And she, I think, knows this about me and she won't let me like slack off. And so it can be really hard. So <laughs> you have to be careful on those goals because as soon as somebody finds out about them, then they hold you to them. <laughs> they help you achieve them. <laughs> I know. It's really hard. <laughs> How dare they? I, know. Um, I think one thing I've realized in recent years is the longer I'm at this, the more complicated my definition of success really gets early mm -hmm. on. It tended to be very measurable things, you know, get a book written, get it accepted, get it published, be able to write in a certain amount of time or get a publisher interested enough to want another book or, you know, a certain number of reviews or win an award, whatever it might be, they tended to be much more measurable. And the longer I'm in this, the more I'm realizing that's not where I'm getting that sense of fulfillment and success. And so I've had to step back and kind of redefine what that looks like for me. And in so many ways, it's no longer anything that can be measured, which is mm -hmm. both freeing in some ways and really frustrating in others because mm -hmm. there isn't that checklist of things where you go, okay, I've made it. Look, I'm successful. It tends to be, am I still improving as a writer? Kind of like Esther was saying, am I still enjoying at least some aspect of this? <laughs> am mm -hmm. I striking a good balance? You know, am I doing the good I'd like to be doing, like it tends to be more esoteric. And that's, that's both a great thing because we don't attach so much of our definition of what we're doing to things that are outside of our control, but it also means it's harder to define and it's harder to put your thumb on whether or not you've accomplished it. Um, 
so yeah, I think I'd say the way it has changed is that it's gotten a lot more complicated, but it's also gotten a lot more free, which is kind of great. Okay, so with that said, why do you think our definitions of success have changed over time? I mean, I'm assuming that they all have for all of us, but why are we continually raising that bar for ourselves? I, well, I love what Sarah said about like how it's sometimes they're not measurable things. And um, I think, I think like when I think about success and I look at the four of us, there's part of me that just wants to be like, oh my goodness, you guys, we did it. Like we are successful authors, but I think for some reason that's hard to, to like, just be like, boom, done. So I think for that reason, we do end up having changing goals. We have different things we want to try. We have, um, we want to do something that stretches us or helps us feel like, wow, I did something new. So I think, I think it's natural and it's, um, in some ways it could be frustrating if you're like, oh, I'm just never, I never get to check off like everything's done. But, um, but I think it, I think it's a really cool thing about this career is that you can try new things in it. You can make new goals and yeah. So it's awesome. Yeah, I agree. And, and I think for each of us, our writing hopefully keeps improving. Um, and, and as we has already been said, the market keeps changing. And as we pass these milestones, we see new ones ahead. Um, but I also feel like because each of us has these non-measurable markers of success, sometimes we hold on to those things too. You know, um, I know that we've, we've had this discussion before, but for each of us, I think, we're devoting so much time to our writing. We need to feel that it's it's worth it. It's worth it, not just for us and our families, but for those who read our books. And so I would say one of one of the measures of success that I hope I will never let go of is if I have a reader come up to me and tell me how much one of my books lifted them, how much it helped them through a hard time, how much um, you know, it, it buoyed them up when they really needed it. That to me is a measure of success. And so I think that as I try and apply some of those less obvious things, I want every one of my book to do that for someone. It won't do it for everybody, but even if one person feels that way with each of my books, then, then that is another new measure of success for each book as it comes along. Oh, that's it's like we're getting deep on the podcast oh, today, ladies. Oh, my gosh. I think another reason, in addition to those, because I completely agree, is over time, we also change. And as we change as people, that's going to change what we're aiming for. Um, I feel like I look back at me when I first started writing, when I was cute and in my 20s, <laughs> I had a very different relationship with other people's opinion of me, if that is a good way of putting it. Um, it, 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 I don't want to say mattered more, but kind of did as, as I've grown and matured, hopefully, and changed over time. Um, again, you, I've, I've learned to dive more deeply and to look at those things that really do matter when it comes to to, to me and how I value what I do and where I put my time hearing from people like Sean said that something I wrote touched them or was helpful to them or gave them a lift or buoyed them when they need it means so much more to me now than people who will tell me that technically my writing is really good. You know, those, those kinds of feedbacks that used to mean so much back in the day, whether it was a good review or winning an award or, or something like that. Now it, it, hearing more personal feedback having it reach those goals that mean more to me now than they used to has become part of the definition of success. So I think for me that changes because I change. And as we change, what we're looking for changes too. It's awesome. And I think also just like our knowledge base and our experience, the breadth of our experiences have, has expanded so much that I think our capabilities have expanded as well. So we, we tend to yeah adjust that to match our, like our goals tend to match what we think we're capable of. And what we're capable of now is very different than, at least I know for me, from where I started. 
-hmm. So, okay, for where you are now in your career, what areas do you feel like you've already, you're already successful? And what goals do you have that you are still striving for? Mm -hmm. I feel that's a terribly loaded question. <laughs> um, Tell me. I would, I would say the fact that I have readers who look forward to my new releases feel successful. That, that, that I feel like is a good benchmark. Um, if we're talking about things that can be measured, and we've talked about both in this podcast, I would say that the one thing that I would love to do is expand that readership, both nationally and also internationally. You know, most of us here write books set in other countries. And I've always thought that it would be so neat to have our books available in those countries, obviously the UK being primarily where we write, but, but that would be a fun goal, I think. That would be. So I like to set kind of, I don't think they're weird to me, but <laughs> when I have to say them out loud, sometimes I think they're a little weird. So like uh, early on, one of my really big goals, and I just told myself, if this happens, I will have made it, was I wanted fan art. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted someone to like my book well enough that or good enough, but they would send me something. And um, I still remember the first time I got sent some fan art from mm -hmm. one of my books. And then I've sent, I've gotten a couple others. I think some are behind me, these little peg dolls. I mean, you can't really see mm -hmm. them there, but, but like, I remember getting that and being like, yes, that was like the weirdest goal and I could do nothing to help it, you know? But I hit that and that was awesome. Another goal I set, and anyone who's thinking of writing and doing this, I actually think this is probably the smartest goal I ever set. And that was, I told myself I would write five books before I gave up on this. And um, I've made that goal because I'd seen so many people get into the industry. And at first it is paying for your pencils. And it's like, if you do the math, you're making five cents an hour or something like that. And so, mm -hmm. um, I hit that goal and that was just such an overwhelming sense of like accomplishment for me. So, and I have other goals that I, I need some more weird ones, I think, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> but, but yeah, those are the ones that I think of that I've done that like really stand out to me as, as uniquely yeah. fun and good. Okay. But I'm actually going to step away from this podcast having discovered something in this moment. I love the idea of quote unquote weird goals, <laughs> like things that aren't the, we're having a very serious conversation about how to measure success as a writer. It's just, wouldn't it be neat if, yes, I yeah. love the idea of setting a goal like that, especially if it's not something you can make happen and not something that is a make or break for you in terms of continuing on, because then if, and when it does, it's just that fun little moment of, added nudge that we all need sometimes. So I'm going to try and think of a weird goal too. <laughs> I, I, need one. I, I love that idea. Okay. Anyway, that's a little tangent. But and, and those weird ones, they're no work, right? Yeah. <laughs> you don't exactly. have to wake up in the morning and how am I going to meet this goal? You just have to. Exactly. It is company joy. Something. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. what we need. Yeah. I love that. Okay. So that's my challenge to everyone listening. Yeah. Set a, wouldn't it be neat if goal for you? something you don't have to make happen and something that doesn't have to happen for you to be happy. Yes. So there you go. Um, I think for me, um, something that I've seen myself improve in and that I feel you know good about having reached this point, I guess, in my career, I've always been one who tries different things. Like, you know, we'll shift into a new subgenre or submit to a new publishing house or you know, haven't been afraid, afraid to try new things, but always a little bit terrified and kind of did them anyway. But I feel like I've reached the point where new and kind of ridiculous, chaotic ideas occur to me. And I'm like, let's do this. Like, I'm not afraid to try something really out there because I'm no longer afraid to fail at it. And it took me a long time to get to that point. So that's something I've had to, of late, kind of acknowledge to myself because it wasn't really a goal I had set. And yet having reached it, it feels like a success on a more interpersonal kind of level, but yeah, not, not being as afraid of failure as I used to be is one. And one that I'm kind of, you know, striving for and working more toward is being willing to expand to even weirder things, <laughs> which I think I'm going to get weirder than Sarah, but 
Um, you know, I've started writing screenplays. There's an idea I have for a really super weird screenplay that'll probably never go anywhere and it'll be absolutely the most outlandish thing in the world. And I'm kind of gearing myself up to give it a try. So taking it that next step to really, really trying different things and not worrying about whether or not they work. So that's my next step. I love hey, that. Can I ask a question about screenplays, Sarah? Yeah. Can you just write kissy kissy on those and, and then the, the actors figure it out? Yes. <laughs> In the dresses, you can just say they I'm like, kiss, and you're like, I'm like yes. getting this now. I'm getting it. <laughs> yes. I should have started here. <laughs> yes. So now we know where Sarah has been truly successful is how to write a kissing scene in a screen. In a screenplay, you just hire good actors. That's what it comes down there to. There you go. And resist the urge to whistle and stuff from off camera while they're filming. <laughs> Or laughing out loud so much that maybe they have exactly. to redo the tape. I was very well behaved. I feel like I need to throw that out there, but <laughs> we won't tell any stories. Um, so, well, okay, we will. That'll be another another episode. Um, so, I think for me, one probably one of the moments that I felt the most humbled and most successful at the same time. It was the same moment, and that was being the keynote speaker a couple of years ago at Storymakers. Because I remember when they first asked me, I thought, are they punking me? Like, is this like a joke? That somebody, because I am somebody that people do will play weird jokes on. And I was like, maybe this is just a joke. And then when I found out it was real, which I still wasn't 100% sure it was, um, it was like, why me? You know, so I think, um, and and my, the response was, because we knew you'd ask that kind of question. Like they wanted somebody who, I guess, knew that they weren't all that. So... <laughs> It was, but it was just a lot of fun to think, you know, I love how all of us in different ways have stepped out and our, our careers have touched lives for other writers and other people, readers, um, hopefully for the better. And so I think that the, to me, that's the pinnacle of success is when somebody's life is a little brighter, even for a few minutes because of some words we wrote or words we spoke. So, so anyway, so that is, was my kind of moment. Um, but I think that the question we do need everyone to leave in the comments is what is your weird goal? Because <laughs> yes. I think that is a really fun one that we should we should explore. So if you would let, like to share that, we would love to hear them. Um, but thank you so much for joining us on Between the Lines today. We hope you'll join us next time. <laughs>